What is up my dudes? It's Pac-Man here and today I'm bringing you guys another brand new episode of Aussie 6 Analysis, the show where I take your footage and show you where to best improve. So today we're checking out my man Beefy. Uh, always sits around copper, uh, can be anywhere from low copper to mid copper, sometimes he pushes into bronze, um, and really just wants to know like what, what's causing him to be so low, like what, what, is it, what is it that's really holding him back? He doesn't have mad intentions, or at least that he's told me about, you know, aspiring to play competitively or pro league or anything like that. He just wants to have more fun and, uh, and see some improvement because uh, in the end of the day, that's kind of what we're all looking for here. Uh, so hopefully I can check out this footage, dude, and uh, we can show you a few, uh, few little tips and tricks and show you where to, uh, where to, where to put your improvement or where to, where to put your focus, bro. All right, but without wasting too much time, dudes, let's get straight into it. Boom. We back, baby. Copper. Exciting. I always enjoy, always enjoy watching Copper. It's meant with no ill intentions. I just do enjoy watching Copper gameplay sometimes. A completely different game. Okay, so we're playing on Coastline. Hook of Billiards, it's the new season. As we can see, get my epic pen here ready to go on tap. He's playing the Bandit, and this is really the only spot uh, when you're playing on Coastline. I'm sorry, when you're playing on uh, Hook of Billiards, it's really the only spot you, you're going to want to put your Bandit batteries down, so that's all perfect. Um, I've mentioned this a good few times in a lot of my videos. Um, on a lot of my uh, my coastline videos, but you uh, you definitely want to reinforce these walls here. Actually, let me just pause. Ah. You definitely want to reinforce uh, these walls here. Um, both of these two walls, especially you've got you've got so many reinforcements there, but you definitely want to get them walls reinforced uh, just because it's going to give you um, some protection from the long lines of sight that you can hold uh, from within uh, VIP which cuts off the kind of billiards rotation. So if they're trying to plant around Aqua, um, it's really good to have these walls reinforced to at least make it more difficult uh, for the enemies. They can just come in and, and thermite it. Maybe you could see four from below, um, or if they don't have a hard breach available, because sometimes Coastline's one of their maps that you don't always have to bring hard breach. Hard breach, you might um, kind of relegate them to having to play an angle here, uh, which is a lot more predictable. There's only kind of one spot that they can be if that wall is closed and you think they're in VIP, so you can just pre-fire that angle. Um, and they don't get as much kind of room to move or as many angles to, to hold down. So it's always important to keep them walls reinforced. Um, by the way, I was I was thinking um, of doing, a, like, not like a, I don't know if I'd call it a series, but just maybe a series of videos um, going over each individual site. So just go site by site by site by site and just pick the most important, and not the most important, but the biggest sites in Siege at the moment are like the, you know, the most commonly played maps and uh, looking at the kind of common sites. Um, God, okay, let me just uh, go over this really quick as well. Uh, but just showing you the basics of uh, reinforcements and where you want to, yeah, just basically wh what you want to reinforce and uh, kind of the concepts as to why, and maybe some operators and stuff like that as well. So let me know, uh, drop a like. If, we, if, if this video gets, let's call it 1,200 likes, I'll start those videos up. And just, just drop a comment down below and just let me know if that's actually something that you want to see. Uh, but again, so in terms of reinforcements on these walls, that rotation there is good. Uh, but you do want to have a reinforcement on this wall here. Um, you can also do another one here. I probably would. Uh, usually and then on the far left wall there you're going to want another reinforcement here uh, This middle wall is not so important um, Because there's only really one spot that you can play which would be on this side of the bomb chassis Which leaves you exposed to the window so it's not really a great spot and thus the reinforcements kind of wasted uh, But this position if you were to move the position to because think about it Sorry again. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but think about it. That's the bomb, right? Um, and it's facing that way if you instead of playing this side of the bomb if you play this side a little bit further back uh, you can be you can be protected by the bomb from the window you can hold hook a door and then you can also uh, potentially uh, you know support the aqua push if that happens but there's some uh, some of the common reinforcements there site site setup is just so important. Honestly, like, it, without, like, if you just have proper site setups, they're on cool vibe already. Nice shot. Um, but site setup is just, it's so important to just nail that straight off the bat because you're just putting yourself at such a, like, a disadvantage if, um, if you don't, right? Like, honestly, it's one of those things. But nice shot, nevertheless, on the Zofia, I think. 
Okay, so another little thing just to, to make that push that happened there before a little bit harder is uh, it's super simple, but if you just wanna um, pop some barbed wire on the lower part of these stairs, uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult for them to just kind of flood up and rush, because um, at least you'll get that sound cue uh, rather than, now she actually did give you a sound cue because she fired um, one of her little stuns into the ADS, uh, but if she didn't do that, she would have just taken that corner and, and shot you. So, nice C4. That barb as well, probably better suited on um, hook a door there to avoid them just rushing through that door as well. It's a 4v2. You guys look like you're, you're handling this. You're going for the rook armor. No prisoners. Aussie is just not messing around today. Aussie's had enough. That's another reinforcement there that you want to do. Uh, again, this is just a reinforcement video. <laughs> uh, but you want to have this this wall reinforced here. Um, you've got so many reinforcements in the pocket. And it's not like just always up to you to do the reinforcements. But that is a wall that you're going to want reinforced. Actually, you're the only one that's reinforced this entire game, aren't you? Because uh, there's six left and you did the four walls. <laughs> Ooh. I like the app, by the way, or Six Analyst. Link in the description below. <laughs> Cheeky plug. Uh, but yeah, not uh, not too much to say about that round. Just reinforcement suggestions. Um, a nice shot on the uh, nice shot on the Zofia. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next round. Okay, so straight off the bat, straight off the bat, this ain't it. You don't you don't want to have um, this entire wall reinforced. Um. Like this, this entire kind of wall, and it, there's no point um, putting batteries on it either, because they can just be shot straight off the wall from sunrise. You only want to put these two, so the, the two walls that you just did here, so this wall and then the wall over to the left, uh, they're the only two uh, walls that you want to reinforce because it helps, um, it's kind of confusing, but it helps protect you if you're playing on the bomb. Um, but you don't want to have those two walls reinforced because it really allows them to just jump into kitchen window and get an easy plant, which can't be defended from... You know, the hallway can't be defended from courtyard, can't be defended from um, luggage. There's like a long line of sight. If you just kind of open that patch of wall, it pretty much just stops them from, from uh, jumping in kitchen window. Or maybe they can jump in, but it stops them at least from being able to just hop in and plant. Makes it a lot harder for yourself um, if, you, if you reinforce all them walls up. Those walls there are good, so you want them walls reinforced. The, uh, the, the, the uh, kegs wall. Are you playing from courtyard now? A little bit exposed, but it is what it is. Courtyard's fine. So no courtyard, main lobby. Is that my game or your game? Oh, this is probably another guy in the uh, on the OC servers. My man, Ozzy. Just realised that's two in a row now. There you go. Oh, it's a 5v3. When did that happen? Oh my god. Okay, at this point, I would probably be starting to rotate, maybe potentially off this position. Not sure. Maybe some communication with the team. Hey, where, where was the IQ or the Amaru? You know. There hasn't, there hasn't been a, lot of, a whole lot of communication in this game in general. Uh, but it doesn't hurt. Like, it... it Often you'll find if there's no communication whatsoever, it takes one person to step up and start communicating for the whole team to start communicating. So if you ever notice that happening in a solo queue match and, and you, you're kind of dedicated to winning and you want to get that dub, uh, be the guy that, that opens the lines of communication. Take control. Okay, so now the problem with this sort of position, right? Like you can, it's, it's fine to an extent, but the problem with this sort of a position is you're, you're just exposed to so many different angles. Right, so you're exposed to someone dropping down hatch. You're exposed to the position that you were just looking at before, uh, which was main stairs. You're exposed from a line of sight from bottom cool vibes if they kind of uh, rotate into the hallway just here. If they rotate down the end of that hallway. Um, you're obviously exposed from courtyard, probably not from luggage, from security directly behind you. There's, I know you were kind of exposed from that a lot throughout the throughout the game, but now it's a two v two v one. And you don't have any protection, really. The only the only guy, the only your other teammate is playing on site, 
Um, he's not going to be able to cover any of these angles. This IQ killed you from luggage. It could be anywhere now. Um, so in this situation, I wouldn't be standing here. I'd, I'd probably just get closer to, to your teammate and look to trade each other. That's a waste of a C4. Sounds like he's still above. Again, if you, if you, because like the, even though you're kind of in a powerful position here, if there's a drone on you or anything along those lines and you've been yellow pinged, all it's going to take is this Amaro IQ, whoever it is, to just wide swing and pre-fire you um, from this position. So just swing out and go, but and uh, murder you, and your teammate isn't in a position to be able to trade you. Okay, so your teammate's probably doing the right thing, though. It's you that's not doing the correct thing. So what I would potentially do if I were you is I would rotate back into sight and uh, just set up a crossfire with your teammates so that you're both able to shoot and trade each other. Trading is such an important aspect that basically gets overlooked right up until mid to high plat, the concept of trading. For those of you who don't know what trading is, it's basically just... If, let's say, if you die, your teammate is there to get that refrag, which is just to basically kill the guy straight away. Nice. And you land the shot. Uh, Logitech G502 probably wasn't the player there dropping down courtyard. Um, but in the, in the same regard, once again, uh, that concept stands true. You want to, especially in a 2v1 situation, you want to be close to your teammates uh, so that you can trade if one of you guys does go down. Okay, we're playing on Penthouse now. Now, just a, uh, a really quick, again, this whole video is basically just going to be about utility placement and reinforcements. But just a little uh, a little quick tip. When you're playing Bandit and you're uh, you're trying to Bandit off the, the penthouse walls, sorry, the, uh, the walls into VIP or whatever, um, you want to put your Bandit battery basically there, one there, and then the middle one wants to be as far to the left as possible. And then the one on the right, the one that you just done, wants to be as far tucked into the corner behind the wardrobe as possible. And why you want to do that is because if someone gets on the main window rappel there, uh, with your two, your your placement currently, he'll be able to just shoot them off straight away and they'll be able to open up without even a thatcher or anything like that or without going below. Whereas if you kind of hide them away, it makes it a little bit more difficult. A little bit more difficult to kind of get rid of them. Um, so just a little tip. Waste a little bit more time. You can probably still shoot that off from the window. All three of them, I reckon, he'd be able to shoot off. There hasn't been one single call out this entire game. Aussie's stepping up again. Getting the dub. I probably should have looked into this match a little bit more. That's the problem. Because I like to... I like to... I don't like to kind of watch the games before I play them. I like to just hop in and just say what I'm seeing and talk about it. Um, otherwise, I feel it to be a little bit too kind of like scripted. Uh, but I probably should have done a little bit more digging into this one and made sure that it wasn't a 5v3 <laughs> null match. Nevertheless, the Amaru Logitech G502 getting the double frag. Aussie going down, the staff fragger. This is becoming casting. You've rotated back into sight. Nothing wrong with that. Hatch is open. Again, you're not to know. Not a whole lot of communication. Oh, we nearly went for the big play again on the Rook armor. Now... So, again, this angle isn't terrible. This angle's not terrible. It was a little bit worse before when you were just a little bit further back. It was You're a little bit wider. So this, the angle, sorry, let me just pause it here. The angle's not terrible. So, first of all, the first thing that you kind of notice is that your crosshair placement is a little bit low. Um, you do want to kind of try and keep your crosshair placement around that level so that little dot wants to be up there. Um, just so that if someone does swing the corner, you're going to be in line with their head for a quick headshot. Um, but what I was going to talk about more so is this kind of an angle, right? The, the problem with this angle is that the, the, the concept of peak is advantage when someone comes around the corner and just swings at you, this isn't a, you're not holding a pixel angle here by any means, right? Your whole, you're basically your whole body's gonna be showing. So when someone turns this corner, the first angles that they're gonna clear, first of all, they'll see this big um, open reinforcement, if they're doing it right anyway. Uh, so they'll clear that angle. If they can't see anyone, the next angle they're gonna look for is the doorway, right? And the way that peaker's advantage works, if you get peaked upon, if someone is to swing out and peek you, uh, they're gonna be at the advantage because you're just not gonna see them um, before they see you. So if they're sharp, relatively sharp, they're gonna just take that corner and go boom and uh, take you out of the game. So you wanna be trying to hold pixel angles as much as possible, really tight slivers, really tight slivers and then act on that information. That's how you kind of counter a, uh, 
a pixel and that's kind of a good example of it like you know, you, you want to be trying to hold really tight pixel angles so you could maybe potentially get behind a bum. You could have really done with some reinforcements on that um, site. Again, just to give you some more reinforcement advice, uh, this this room theater just needs to be, all six walls of theater need to be reinforced um, for the most part. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so you just want to make sure that you're trying to hold them pixel angles as much as possible. And uh, for, yeah, just because in, in that regard, Pixel P, uh, sorry, uh, Pika's advantage when you're getting swung on, they're always going to have that advantage unless you give the advantage back to you. You play an off angle that they're not going to be checking or you take a really small angle like with a sliver of information and once you see that you kind of see like a black smudge cross it, um, you'll know that the person's there. You'll see them cross, then you can kind of like swing out yourself and take your shot. Um, it's a better way. So holding, a, holding a, an angle stagnant by just standing still uh, often gets you killed, unfortunately. Okay, round four, it is now a 4v4. You guys just lost a 5v2, I believe. Again, no trading in action, but that's just, that's not your fault. It's uh, kind of everybody's fault, but trading is how you kind of secure that rather than giving them, you know, five one-on-ones or whatever it is, whatever whatever happened. You want to give them as many uh, 2v1s as possible. 3v1s is even better, All right? Setting up crossfires. You shouldn't, you shouldn't really be able to lose a 5v2. Okay, you're droning through. Um, it looks like you guys are coming through main lobby. So you've hopped off your drone. I, I'd, be, I'd be very cautious doing that when you've just kind of got this guy in the building. So you've got him into, like as a support player when you're droning, you've, you've got him into main stairs, right? But now he's completely without information. And, uh, you know, you, you have drained out Courtyard, but I guess it just comes down to what sort of a push are you guys going for. So let's see if this backfires. But now this guy's walking up main stairs with basically no information. So he's going in himself. And again, just here, like when you're taking, when you're taking these angles, just to give you a heads up, so you want to just try your best to, to be aware of this when you're playing, right? So I'll just go from here. Try your best to be aware of these things when you're playing, right? So even that, like look at the look at the line that you you're taking this angle on. Even though you are pre-aiming, you're taking this angle on a super low line. So if someone is there, you're going to be body shotting them all day rather than a headshot. Same thing. Ready? Yeah. Like you know, you you come into this angle like this. So if someone is standing there, they're going to be yeah. You're giving them that advantage. You should have the advantage because you're peeking. You're the one with the peeker's advantage. You're taking that angle. Um, but when you're aiming at their kneecaps, if they if they have good crosshair placement, you're getting smart. You're getting slammed. <laughs> so you want to be aware of that crosshair placement the whole time, and it makes it easier if you just follow this dot and try and keep it at one consistent level the entire time, the entire round. All right. So your crosshair placement is a little too low for my liking. Okay, so now you have decided to come up main stairs alongside. Um, you have a buck that's dead. A really good uh, little cheeky move that you could do here is you could just throw your drone down main stairs just here. So you just like, you've got two drones, you can just go boom, throw one at the bottom of main stairs and then just in game chat, just say, yo, uh, buck, uh, just watch this flank cam for us. And then you can't really be flanked, right? Because you're attacking cool vibe. So that's the only place that you guys can get flanked from for the most part, unless someone's already in penthouse or VIP, but it doesn't look like that because of uh, the glass. Maybe you could put one 90 even rather than bottom main stairs. You could put one 90 and then push up further. So on that 90 corner, so you can get a, a flank, but a flank cam is a really good way to, to kind of not have to worry about flanking to put that dead uh, teammate to good use. I got a shield set up. You have nothing to get rid of it. That gang goes down. Sorry, the uh, the glass goes down. Okay, you've got a cap gun. Unlucky. Nice, uh, nice frag on the second time. Second time lucky. Okay, stepping up. They don't have that wall reinforced again. So uh, that line of sight is there for the taking, but 2v2, it's probably not overly relevant. Look, I, I, I'm not going to stand here and tell you you need to be more aware of Capcan traps because I always get done by Capcan traps. I'm terrible for it, bro. I'm terrible for it. Okay, you're stepping up hard now. Not a whole lot of information. Still got plenty of time. You know, you could, you could drone here. 
Not now, you're too far pushed up. But rather than kind of pushing through and looking for a, looking for a, uh, you know, pushing through like this, he's on top, you just seen him, right there. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh dear lord. Oh my god, was, am I, am I losing my mind, or was that not him on drinks table? Yeah, you can hear him on drinks. Oh my god, was that him? Am I losing my mind? You're freaking out, bro. You're freaking out. So, just, hang on. Let's just see if this is the lesion. Alright, alright. Bang! Look at him. <laughs> oh my god, bro. You get so close to him as well. Look. You get all up in his grill. And it looks like you kind of go to plant, maybe. You go to plant. And you're like, where is he? I'll get him. <laughs> That's unfortunate, bro. But what I would say, right? Is rather than you kind of going for that lone mission there, like you're just sprinting at them from, um, sprinting at them from, you know, in through hooker and stuff like that. Surprising that you kind of you were allowed to do that. Who knows where this echo is, to be honest. But um, rather than doing that, you know, you could you could potentially just, like I said, leave that flank cam in 90, and then both of you guys come forward and uh, and try and take control of Aqua. Looks like the uh, Thatcher already got that done, right? Um, but then what you can do is you can just get the Thatcher to just sit in behind the bomb and uh, and go for a plant, right? That's a real weird looking uh, bloke. Hang on. If I do that, and then it's like a pig, isn't it? Um, okay, get rid of that. But you can get the Thatcher to plant right there behind the bomb. It's the default position. So plant there behind the bomb, and then for you as a, a player, it's difficult. It is difficult because you're gonna have to cover basically two angles. But for you, let me see. I'll see if I can get a better shot for you. Yeah, here, right? So then when he's planting right here, so he's planting towards you. Now there's two pl there's two ways that they're gonna be able to come from. They're gonna either come from this position right here, or they're gonna come from where this lesion comes from uh, in a second and wide swing from drinks, right? So from where that lesion is, kind of like behind that wall there. So the lesion's over there, so you can either swing out like that uh, from drinks, or you'll usually get someone crouched, um, swinging this corner here. Right, so you've kind of got two positions that you need to you need to be able to worry about. So what you might want to do is you might want to not be as wide as you are currently. So if you're here, right, and like if you want to just kind of move this way, you know, let me just change color of this pen. So your let's say your body line, uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> let's say your body line is right here. What you might want to do is you might want to move this way a little bit so that your body line is now here, um, so that when you're you're doing this kind of left lean it's now it's now not you're not exposed it's hard to explain but you're not exposed to to this swing so you can line up this uh rotate with the swing so when the lesion the lesion is going to have to come out into your crosshair and uh you should be able to then put them down right i don't know if that's if i explained that correctly but what i'm basically saying is if you were to play this position by standing a little bit more to the right while the thatch is going for a plant you can kind of instead of trying to like flick between the two the two lines of sight you can just wait for the lesion to wait for this person to come from drinks and crack them but have your crosshair lined up and the angle set up correctly so that you're also watching for this guy uh, coming through the rotate so you kind of get both and if you have that 90 cam behind you you don't need to worry about your flank at all you just need to worry about those two positions um so maybe something like that uh, might be a, a better way to approach the round um but yeah in the end of the day the you're gonna go for the plant you take out the echo drone i think the lesion swings out and gets the job done yeah so uh, maybe a little bit more coordination and actually working towards going for a plant rather than just kind of like rushing through and uh, and doing your thing that way, okay? And the Thatcher, before you say the Echo Drones, the Thatcher can just throw a little EMP down and, and disable them for the meantime while you're going for the plant. Cool. Okay, round five. This is a straight 4v4, eh? This just isn't a 5v5 at all. Okay, not a whole lot of droning going on there, but uh, is what it is. That's a trade. That's a refrag, my man. Now what you want is one of your other teammates to come and try and help you. So try and refrag you. Right, so they're in penthouse now. So again, there's not a whole lot of kind of like ideas as to what way you want to push. 
So a big thing, a big thing that I just want to really quickly mention is I'm pretty sure you can see a guy right here. Oh my god, that's not what I was going to mention at all. That's a bloke. That is a bloke. Is that a vigil? Oh my god, bro. That's a person. It is. 100%. That's a person, bro. <laughs> that's a crack up, dude. Copper. Um, but what you might want to potentially go for as a team is look at trying to take VIP, which is that room kind of down there. God, my drawing is just getting worse. But that room down there and open up that wall that you uh, banded when you guys were defending Penthouse, right? So open up that wall, set up a couple of crossfires, a couple of angles, and try and plant behind the bed. Uh, it's much more effective than just kind of running through the map and hoping to get some kills and, yeah, getting closer and closer to the site. But I want to see what's happening. Oh, you see him. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer182. Okay. Okay. You get me this time, he says. But next time... I'll get ya. That is funny, man. That's a coconut bra. That's a, a season one coconut bra tip. What is up, my coconut bras? If you uh, if you if you hit out this vase here, you can actually get up and climb in here for some easy frags, as the enemy just will not be expecting you to be there. Gotta love coconut bra. Okay, well that was an easy round. Uh, moving on. Okay, 3-2 match point. You're still on the firm. Again, just no communication here. I'm not trying to like bag you out on that, but it's definitely essential. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know, Siege, there, there, there's a bit of communication there, but Siege is a really, really team-based game. And uh, you'll be able to get a lot more dubs if there's uh, some communication flowing. Okay, so the Echo is just doing random shit. Excuse my language. <laughs> He's running. It's unfortunate. Okay. The Echo's got out. They're playing Penthouse again. And, like, do you see what I mean? So now, this time, you're, uh, you're, you're, going, you're attacking the same site, but in a completely different way. You're not going through the same area. Now you're in Kitchen, and you're kind of playing off that information, right? Because you see the Echo, and you go for the chase. Nice little jiggle peek there. Mechanics are, aren't too bad, aren't too bad. Not sure about that. You're playing off instinct here, not off actual legitimate information. There's a default cam. Yeah, I'd be, I'd just be super aware of what you're doing here, eh? Because you're kind of just doing a little bit of everything. And this is, this is kind of what I mean again, without, without having a legitimate strategy, you're just kind of floating, right? Your entry frag in its therm. You get that frag, which is well played, right? But think about, like, just even think about this, right? So that echo was just on main stairs. And then when you kind of come back in here to fight this pulse, like, even where you are right this very moment, like, if that pulse was sharper, you'd be gone. Or if the echo um, from main stairs came to support the pulse, you're completely exposed to where you know there was a player just just a minute ago, just literally a minute ago. And this is kind of why, like a push, like a push where it's just completely um, dependent on just pushing up cool vibes, just doesn't really work. There's not enough control there. So it, it, it'd be better to attack Penthouse from maybe Hooker, right? So clear this side of the map or something along those lines or yeah like kind of what you guys are doing i guess to an extent but more information and that kind of falls down to you as a as a support player to drone i'll be careful with the key bind that you're using for push to talk there as well because you could tell you just kind of like on ads and you were just strolling forward as you were talking which means that you're probably using an awkward key bind for push to talk that's better that's better what? giving her legitimate what? information and that's what the Ash should be doing now. She should be taking that control for you. She's repelling. Is she repelling? No, she's not. Oh my god, I've never seen that. Dude, I didn't even know you could repel on that. What? Oh my god, look at her. Oh! Oh! Oh my god. It's actually exciting. Oh, you get the Inja. Nicely done, bro. Not sure what the, uh... Oh! Wait, wait, where's the Ash? Ash! Where'd you go? That was your one job. 
Oh no. Four seconds left. And that's all she wrote. That's unfortunate. So look, again, it's just it's it's I don't I don't wanna be harsh or I don't wanna be um I don't wanna be rude, but I do wanna also give you some advice that you can actually go and action off. Um and so for the most part, what I would definitely recommend doing is actually working towards a specific push and practicing a specific push against a specific defense, right? So uh, especially at the beginning of Siege, you know, which is kind of like where you're at, the kind of like lower ranks of Siege, you can, you're not going to get like specific types of defenses all the time. You'll just kind of get, they'll be defending Hooker and then everyone's just kind of going to be doing weird shit around the map and, and floating about, right? So what I would try and work on, um, and it, it is easier if you do have a, a, a kind of a consistent few people to play with uh, but I'd be working on trying to find uh, or trying to go for things in a specific way so if you're going for penthouse to go through hooker about hook about take control of hooker and billiards um, and then work your way into VIP lock off the flanks and open up the VIP wall and try and go for a plan right so by going for more structured approaches like that uh, you're gonna find more consistent success like the consistency is where you're gonna be falling down like you won that first round um, attacking uh, and that was done through, you know, that guy that was sitting in the pot plant and just everyone kind of hitting their shots. But then the second round, because it's not, you don't have a consistent approach, you're, uh, you're, it's just a bit everywhere. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd focus on trying to play a little bit more consistently on your attacks. Um, you should find more consistent results based off that. Okay, we're in overtime now. <laughs> overtime. Okay. So you got your drone pre-placed in main lobby, ready to help the homies come through. Okay, you got a buck, so I guess you're going to be going for underneath to buck out from below. Like again, main lobby is just a weird place to enter from. There's so many places that you can be swung from. You know what I mean? Like without, like there's only so much you can drone at one time. It's difficult. It's a weird place to enter from. Gonna drone yourself up main stairs, it looks like. They're playing hooker this time. It's a better site than penthouse for sure. Your buck's already there, so there is 190. Maybe call that out to the buck. On ping, fair enough. Pushing up, it's a Jaeger. Jaeger pushing up close. Yeah. Okay, nice shot on the cav. Again, not sure where you guys are going from. So again, like if you guys if you guys want to take this area of the map, a safer way to do it might be from uh, the hatch that sits above bathroom and penthouse, and then the the double window, right? So come in through penthouse once you've drawn theater, and once you've drawn VIP, you just drop um drop into it, take control, and then you can start to drone forward, um drone forward and potentially leave a drone in ninety to cover off your flanks. Um, open up that VIP wall over there. So this is just, I'm trying to give you an understanding as to what I mean by structured push. Maybe by like, you know, that line of sight that I was saying. So you can do that, open up the wall if it's reinforced and then you can just sit there, cut off that line of sight and then let your team rotate around to, um, rotate around to Aqua as you did in the first round anyway, the first time you tried to attack this side. So that's maybe a more consistent, a more structured approach to, um, attacking hooker billiards it's not the only way there's plenty of different ways you can attack hooker billiards but that's maybe that's just one way that you can try and practice and and learn and then you can move on to another or yeah different things like that okay so again you've now got the bomb completely separated from the team not a lot of cohesion going on right now but it is a 3v2 you've got one in penthouse and now you went from an advantage to a complete disadvantage so don't be afraid just there to literally just hop off that balcony, run out the main door and go and catch up with your teammates. Um, because if you die, you're leaving yourself at a big disadvantage. That guy's netting through hook a window. So maybe give him that information straight away rather than oh, as if that just happened. Relay that information immediately so that your team can act off it because they still don't really know <laughs> what's going on. Yeah, these guys have just wasted a lot of time. Oh, nice. <laughs> what is it with the uh, with the vase spot, hey? The vase spot seems to be the play. Seems to be the play, or not the play, actually, I should say. That's uh, that's unlucky. Okay, so we're defending kitchen now. Again, 
those reinforcements aren't, ain't the play, but uh, I'm not going to go over it again. So this, these guys are uh, straight onto it this time. And now, now that this is kind of a good example, right? Because now you're the only one that can kind of protect Kitchen Window. And if they push from Sunrise right now, if they were to split push Kitchen Window and Sunrise, you can't play where you're playing right now. So then they're basically allowed to just hop in that window for free. So uh, that's why you don't reinforce that wall for the most part. You've also got some pressure coming from service. They're pushing in service. You guys are under some serious heat here. Oh, damn. Monty's rotated to Sunrise. That wasn't the Monty, but that's, yeah, again, <laughs> better player would have got you dead just there, you know? That's that whole thing that I talk about, that, like, you know, certain things will work to a certain point, and then they just, they'll stop working, right? That guy had to cut off from, uh, from service. It's unfortunate. Pushing a bad macro. Okay, so they're going hooker again. I imagine you guys are going to go through main lobby. You do have a consistent approach, but the main lobby take just ain't it. Won't lie to you, bro. You understand fundamentals, though, which is good, bro. Which is good. You've got a good foundation to work off. You're just a little bit misguided in certain areas. Right. So you're looking at kitchen now. You've got kitchen control. Nothing wrong with that. you kind of got control from below you could potentially get the iq to go into sunrise do some work you know rotate someone out to hook a balcony but right now if you don't start doing those things or you don't get the ash to open up from below you're gonna run into a bottleneck Rotation hole on the top of blue stairs. Sorry, cool vibes. you're gonna run into a bottleneck here shortly because you're all gonna have to start flooding up them stairs that's why you kind of need to split that push once you've got the control you're very susceptible to a flank here as well if someone's to rotate down main stairs and come through kitchen. Just be aware of that. I mean, you're looking to kind of all just force your way up these stairs and it's unlikely to work, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay, the IQ's kind of noticed this, it looks like. She's rotating. Yeah, she's rotating to the window. That's good. So that makes it a little bit easier. Makes your passage a little bit easier. You Got peek one. out, get a nice shot. Wait, what was that guy? But another one on the stairs. Again, you're kind of just trying to force your way up these stairs. It's difficult. Legion it's difficult. The uh, the ash goes down. I'm not sure when the Thatcher went down a little earlier, I guess. But again, though that's kind of why I push like that. It's a little bit too one-dimensional. It's not going to work for the most part. So uh, So that's kind of where you went wrong here. You. that's unfortunate all right so look for the most part my friend you, like i said like you've got you've got fundamentally you understand things um i think from what the way it looks like you understand like the idea of droning you understand the idea of you, you just you have a very basic understanding which is good like you've got yourself 10 kills and six deaths here so mechanically in copper you're fine you're not you're not worrying i do think your mechanics will struggle as you move out of copper and into bronze and into, you know, maybe, maybe not so much bronze, but like, I guess when you start getting towards silver and things like that, mechanically, you'll start to, that will, that won't be able to carry you through, right? It won't be able to carry you through anymore. Um, so to get some more consistency in that aim and that crosshair placement, focus on play, play more T-Hunt, bro. Like T-Hunt is a really, really good way to practice uh, your crosshair placement. Don't just play it on plane. Um, if you're working on crosshair placement for maps specifically, just go set it up on the, all the different rank maps. So there's, I think there's seven or eight or whatever. Um, set up a disarm bomb or just elimination on those maps and walk around the map and just try and focus on just headshots on all the enemies you see. And it's going to get you a little bit more consistent with that crosshair placement for the most part. And try and always keep your crosshair at head height. Um, right, so that's going to how you be able to work on that. And it can now work on that kind of like that aim sensitivity. And just in general, your mechanics will, will see benefit from doing that, right? So that's something that I'd add into the routine. Uh, I definitely look and try and finding a few mates um, in and around the same rank that all kind of want to improve or that you guys want to try and work on things together. Um, if you don't have mates specifically, you can just ask someone like in your games, you can just say, yo, do you guys want to keep playing as team or you want to join Discord or whatever and start making friends that way? Um, because then you can start to work on them pushes together. Um, and like I said, once you kind of work on push pushes kind of consistently over time, you'll find more consistency in the results. Now that consistency might not always be wins, right? Maybe you, you, you keep doing it one way and you keep getting it wrong. You 
keep losing. Maybe you're consistently losing. Uh, whereas when you were doing it a little bit more random, like in this video, you might have had a little bit more success, but uh, success, but consistency is key, my dude, because if you're losing the whole time, even if you do try it and you start losing the whole time, um, you're going to be able to spot as to why you're losing the whole time. You'll be able to figure out what's holding you back or where you're going wrong, especially, that's especially powerful if you're playing with a consistent team. Um, because then you can try and fix those errors and uh, and see where you're going wrong. And that's really what's going to progress you from the rank that you're in now and allow you to start playing. You know, you'll skip bronze altogether, go from bronze into silver, and then uh, that's where you'll probably sit. And, and, you know, and then again, you'll have to basically completely change things up once you get there. And, uh, and that's just the that's just the way the game goes. It's it, it's a it's a big old slug. Uh, but like I said, you know, ten kills, six deaths. Mechanically, you're fine um, for this specific rank to to kind of get your mechanics up to scratch for the next few ranks. T hunt's gonna be your best friend. Um, and work on work on consistent pushes, right? If you don't understand uh, what ways you should push or how you should be taking things, watch streamers play. Uh, for the most part, watch streamers that play in five pack in, in in five stacks. Like you can check out my stream when we play um, coastline. We kind of attack it a certain way. Uh, you can watch people like King George, where they're very kind of structured. It's still ranked. It's not like pro league because pro league's a whole different story. Then, but you still will get some good ideas as to where you should be pushing from watching pro league. But they're just on a another level. There'll be things they're doing that just aren't relevant um, down here. Uh, but yeah, look, just that. Uh, just keep your head up, man. It's a slug. Biggest advice: get get some T hunt hours in. That's gonna line up your crosshair placement and your your just your consistency in your aim. Try and find yourself a consistent five stack and start playing games together and work on pushes consistently, right? And uh, work on rolls and pushes and just uh, you you you'll probably find pretty rapidly you guys will be able to to evacuate the copper ranks, move into bronze, and hopefully onto silver. But hopefully you can take a few tips and a few pointers from this video, man, and uh, it puts you in the right direction. I really do appreciate you sending in the footage to be reviewed. And uh, for everybody else out there, if any of you guys want to have your, your footage review, yeah, reviewed, please use the link in the description below. Uh, it's a little form you can fill out and you can you know write up a little thing as to why you want to be reviewed and stuff like that. And yeah, you might get featured on the show. But uh, as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like and subscribe and uh, and let me know if you want to see that kind of uh, that new series based on, you know, standard reinforcements and whatnot for each individual bomb site. But uh, without wasting too much time, guys, thank you once again for, for being here and for supporting, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.